part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. Hey guys, it's Tyler. Just let you know that this episode's a special. It's the audio from a video that I was part of when I did the Multiverse fundraiser this year, where I got to interview Black Lightning himself, Mr. Cress Williams. Now, this is an abridged interview. If you want to check out the full interview, please check out our YouTube and you can find the full conversation between Keisha, Cress, and I. Or check out the YouTube for the Multiverse fundraiser for even more information. Uh, with my friend Keisha Acuff here. So go ahead and enjoy. Hello. Oh, hi. Hey guys. I just saw you earlier. <laughs> did you? What, what, where did you see me? I've actually been watching reruns of uh, Black Lightning. Um, oh wow! And, okay. You know, shoot whatever you want to talk about. Everything. Well, okay. Um, we have a comment here from Dolly or Molly Daniels. Here says, "I remember Chris on Beverly Hills 90210 and Living Single." Yeah. That's yeah. She remembers my first two jobs ever. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, my first two television jobs ever. I, before that, I did a, a a small dinner theater play where I, I I actually got paid. So that was, I guess, technically my first professional acting job was dinner theater. But um, these are my first two television jobs ever. That's going way back. Well, what I find the most fascinating about your IMDb is how many things <laughs> I had seen you in. But forgot uh-huh. that I had seen you in. Um, and I mean, your career is spanning from NYPD Blue, JAG, Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, Nash Bridges, West Wing, um, Friday Night Lights, which everyone tells me I need to watch. And of course, Keisha yeah. brought up Heart of Dixie. It's very impressive. It's so very impressive. And nothing is the <laughs> same. It's yes. like not in the same genre at all. It's like, let's go from this little hometown country thing where I play, you know, a mayor to, hey, I am a legitimate, like, superhero. Right. Yeah, that's, on some level, it's by design. Um, At least, you know, in my head, it's the the type of actor I wanted to be. And when I started, like, studying acting, it was the type of actor I was kind of training to be. And I just been blessed that that's how it worked out, because, uh, I get bored and typically like whenever I'm playing something, I'm already thinking about the, the, the exact opposite that I want to play. And it's, and Hollywood has, has been cool in the fact that I haven't been pigeonholed into anything. So it's, it's kind of cool. Can you take us back to what made you like, where, where did the acting bug strike? Where, where first when you were like, this is what I want to do. And you decided yeah. to like get involved. Yeah, I mean, I I would almost say on some level, I'd almost say since birth, because um, uh, I don't remember not wanting to do it. I, I uh, my mother at first reference to me as a baby, she was like, she had two things. She said, first of all, when I laughed, it just made everybody want, it made everybody laugh. It was very infectious. And I'm like, okay. Um, but she also said that, um, it, you know, no matter what, if I was all over the place, whatever, all you do is turn on the television and then I was transfixed. And so I always looked at that as a kid, like, oh, that was, that was destiny. But like, I I just, I grew up watching a lot of television and, and back in those days, there were lots of old movies that were on and I just soaked up everything. And I just, I, I, I just felt like that's what I want to do. Um, and I knew I was a bit strange because I remember when I was, God, I was probably like fifth or sixth grade and we had just moved into a new neighborhood. And, you know, back then kids actually played outside. Um, and, you know, you you basically, when you wanted to make friends, you went outside and you just, the neighborhood kids on the street and you started, you know, playing. And I remember we were all kind of, I met these kids and we were all kind of going, what do we do? Do we want to go play hide and seek? Do you want to go do this? Do you want to do that? And I, for some apparent reason, chimed in and go, let's have a singing contest. And... I, 
immediately in my head also knew I was pretty introspective as a kid. I was like, that's strange. Like, that's not normal for me to say that. Um, we didn't have a singing contest, but that was kind of, you know, the, the first memory I have of myself going, yeah, you're a little different. Um, so don't worry, none of us here are normal. So yes, yes. We're in the right place. Yeah, I don't oh, think my, really, really anybody's normal, but my um, it's true. My best my best friend has a funny story about talking about being a kid on the playground at school singing songs from Les Mis and people just looking at him like, What what are you singing? And he's just like singing, Do you hear the people? And he's like, Yeah, he's like, I, I, I knew I was a little off. <laughs> so so what is he? What is, wait, is he a is he is he an actor, singer, Broadway producer? What does he do? Right now, he he does music production and started his own studio in Cincinnati. There you go. So, That's awesome. So I love to hear. It's that. just one of those stories that you know I pass on to my son because my son is getting really into theater right now. He okay. uh, just auditioned for his second play and he got a pretty significant part for being his second play at school. So nice. What what he's play? A, he's they're doing 101 Dalmatians. Okay. Oh, okay. And, and he got Pongo. And that's what he, you know, wanted. And he just did a Christmas carol in December. And now uh, he's going to audition for the Knave of Hearts in April. And he's only eight. So, like, this is, like, him getting started. And he's just really excited for it. That's Oh, man. That's beautiful. Um, but it's, a, it's a great, you know, tool to kind of stretch out. And, I mean, you know, just, like, playing sports these are all things i think that that kids you know i was that shy kid as well so that like my mother i i did choir because like I, I don't know if it's weird growing up we moved around a lot a and then i don't remember there being a lot of plays in the schools that i went to certainly even in high school our high school didn't have a theater program so i was just kind of sitting on my thumbs oh, through man. most of high school so uh but i did a lot of uh uh choir um and even then, like my mother would just be like, you know, you need to smile more. And that was it. And, and so she knew me as this sh shy kid. Uh, so it wasn't until my junior year of high school, uh, our school had a, a school talent show every year and um, you people would try out to be the host. And so I was a host. And as a host, you know, you're, you're kind of writing your own intros and outros, describing acts. And, and uh, uh, so it was the first time she saw me actually I was up there I was doing like Michael Jackson impersonations and all these different little little sketches she's like oh my god that's my that's my son oh my goodness so, oh that's so cute um, yeah that was the only indication that I was going to be an actor and 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 to her credit when I actually came to her and said no this is what I want to do with my life with like with her seeing no experience of it she was just like yeah go for it as opposed to like you are a shy kid do something else um, she was very encouraging, so that was cool. Well, we're glad that, cool. that she was encouraging, because yeah. if yes. not, literally one of my favorite shows would not have one of my favorite actors in it. Uh -huh. So Heart of Dixie, because Heart of Dixie is actually one of my favorite series since it came out. Oh, I have thank you. watched it probably a good five to six times from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah, yeah really bad ADHD so each time I forget half of it and then it's like I'm rewatching it the same way every time uh, like a different way every time so that's amazing I had so many different shows that I wish I had um ADHD and I wish I because I whenever the show I love I'm like yeah I'm like I wish I could erase my memory and watch it again that's awesome thank you so much you're welcome well we're <laughs> we're very excited to have you here Mr. Williams and thank you for being part of this and you know giving us your time so we could chat and raise some money yeah yeah awesome it, uh, i'm very happy to be here, honored to be here and um yeah let's raise some money and and uh <laughs> that was a hoot that was such a hard of dixie it's funny because the people i and i understand uh i've seen people over the years who uh, are like you who've watched it like many times over and uh, people come up to me and said oh whenever i'm sick it, you know, it's the show that I, when I'm in bed sick, I, I just got to put it on. It's and a watch. comfort show for me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, it's it's uh, it was really cool actually to be on a show though that was like not only the show itself, but like even the environment was so uh, family friendly at the time. My my oldest, who's now uh, 17, she was you know much younger, and it was her first times really on sets, and they were so uh, 
welcoming and um, it was a, a cool place for her to be. So, Well, see, my first daughter is Dolores and my son's name is James. Nice. So I can pretty much pick whatever at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. My, uh, my grandma's nickname growing up was Crick or Cricket. So oh, just because yeah. she would run in the country and play in the country and everything. She grew up in the country and everything. So. It's funny. And this is like just happenstance because it was like a couple nights ago. I already knew this, but we were at the dinner table talking um i don't know how it came back up again but my wife at one point someone decided to start calling her cricket she's like five three and she's got these big beautiful eyes so at different points in her life she's like people would just want to call her these these cute names um and at one point somebody was calling her cricket and we all and we all just kind of like went like what what why that's horrible i already knew it but my nickname is, is bug um, I am you also very name, tiny. I'm five one and a half. Bug too. That's crazy. That's how, what, how tall yeah. are you? I'm five one and a half. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's so what I'm my uh, father in law calls my daughter. <laughs> calls her bug. And so, yeah. My right. entire life growing up, I was called Bug or uh -huh. Boris because my sister's name is Natasha. Ah. So Natasha and Boris. Yes. Um, I got the short end of the stick there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, cool. I was short, so they just went with it. Wow. Yeah, my youngest daughter, uh, her middle name is June. Um, uh, named uh, my 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 father was uh, Oscar Williams Jr. and everybody called him June, so we gave her the uh, middle name June. And um, everyone, we're trying to get June Bug to stick, so. I get June bug did stick for me. I was born in June and my nickname ah, was bug. So nice. yeah, I mean, we were hoping cause we already knew that we were going to, we were going to, her middle name was going to be June and her due date was in June. And we're like, I hope it's not because people always think like, Oh, that's why you named her June. Fortunately, she decided to, you know, she's like, no, I don't want that moniker. So she <laughs> came May 31st, but, uh, so that people can't attribute to June because it's a different reason for June. But yeah, anyway. That's smart. Good for her. She she made the yeah. call. She knew what was going on. <laughs> Thanks. That's so. like when my son. Well, I mean, it's like my son. Like I I you know my wife was pregnant. I was like, please be born before daddy turns thirty. And he was born January twelfth, and my birthday is February twelfth. So he came one month before I turned thirty. So I was like, oh, all right. He's already got a little bit of a smart aleck in him. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, kids do that. They do that. They do. They do. Um, now, Mr. Williams, I have a couple questions for you. Yeah. Um, looking at your your history and the characters you play, I have to ask you: Are you a comic book fan? So, yeah, in a tangential way. Like, I didn't grow up reading a lot of comic books. Um, I didn't have a lot of money. Uh, so, but I grew up like, uh, as I said, digesting everything that was on the screen. So, I grew up watching every cartoon I could think of. Um, and any comic book movie i mean to this day i'm still a bit of uh it's so funny nerds are kind of like this whole thing of nerddom is like kind of it's it's um we were talking about it the other night um because we were watching this cooking show and it was all these like it was like these baking people and, and i was like oh these are these are like baking nerds because they have all these these uh circuits of baking competitions and then we were talking about well yeah there's just there's nerds there's cosplay and there's cosplay nerds and then there's you know there are actual food nerds and and i i didn't say it out loud but i was wondering like, well, we're kind of like my wife and i were like kind of like universal nerds because i kind of nerd out on, on a lot of different things sci-fi fantasy food like all sorts of things um so growing up i i i watched everything um you know, uh, from the Super Friends and anytime we didn't have back then, there wasn't like the genre that it is today, the superhero genre, which is amazing. Um, so I know a little bit about a lot. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah, totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. I just, you know, I, I remember, okay, watching Lois and Clark. I, I and thought we that's on... the first thing that popped in my head. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, I know that guy. And then I was like, oh my gosh, it is him. I was like super excited. And it just, 
you know, because you did uh, Baron Sunday yeah. on Lois and Clark. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I'm a huge Superman fan. Right, and, right, right. And everything. So, you know, you are you are part of the super family in several ways, and we'll get there as we talk. But what was it like being on Lois and Clark at the time? Um, It was cool all the way from, like, you know – even the audition process, right? I mean, I, I went into the room and, and generally I'll say the whole like, you know, group that is that is actors. Um, most of my career has been uh, pretty pleasant, even sometimes downright helpful. I've been in rooms, waiting rooms with actors where actors are looking out for each other and, and like giving each other like tips, like, hey, they just said this, so just so you know. Um, and not really like that cutthroat type of thing. Um, and but I do remember going in for that audition, and, and I I can't remember the actor's name, but I remember it was an older actor because Baron Sunday at the time I I, I even felt like it was written for somebody older um, mm. than I was at the time. And but you know I had the audition and I went in, and I remember in the waiting room this older like journeyman actor, he I walked in and he's like, look at young blood trying to get a job. And I was like, what is going on? And it was kind of like with a little bit of venom to it and a little bit of like, I'm like mean girl in me a bit. And I always like thought about it later on when I like I, I did the audition and I, and I got the job and I was like, oh man, if I could have seen him like right after, I'd be mean, looking at that, young blood, got your job, <laughs> you know? And so I remember that. Um, I want you to see him now just so that you can, you can yeah. say that. Okay. And but the but the job also was so much fun. It was like some of the great one of the wonderful things I love about acting is that like you get a role and depending on the role you might you you um you gain insight into something you don't know about or you get to work on something that's not your world. And so, you know, Baron Sunday was a magician like under the guise and they didn't realize like wait a minute, his magic is actually not tricks, they're actually real. So before shooting, like they got, they they partnered me with a musician. They t let me go to the magic castle. They taught me some little things. Uh, I remember I had this. There's um this little thing. I still have it. I have it somewhere, like in kind of my little memorabilia, where it's just like this little hand thing that fits in your in your hand. So from this side, you can't see it, but it's like it's almost like a, a version of a lighter where you can just boom, and then flames. Will, will light here and you like it, it's got like a little cotton ball that sits on it you douse it with kerosene and then you boom, and it looks like fire smoke. so all these little things that I got a chance to like explore um uh, it was the first time I wore contacts because I had these these I think they were cat eye contacts at one point when I transformed and and then I also was very excited because I was very very much aware of like wait a minute I'm like I don't beat Superman because nobody ever beats Superman ultimately but usually people get caught and I get away. Like I was like, that's not, that's rare. I, I, I went against Superman and made it out. Cause I just mysteriously get like, I don't die. I don't, you know, but I don't get caught either. Um, and I, I think I'm, I'm very proud of that. You should be, you should be. And <laughs> as Kristen has said, Baron Sunday was an amazing villain. And I found it to be like a really unique kind of character that I think should have, it should have the character should reappear somewhere and be back. That would you know, be really it could cool. be a, it would be a great character, like uh just to see reassurgence in you know comics or shows or somewhere. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah but it was because he never got away. a he, he never got caught and he did he got away. I so even for a second there, I was even like, Oh, maybe I'll get a chance to come back, you know. Obviously not, but uh but uh it was a lot of fun. I, I love those moments where you get to like, you know, pick up a new skill. Um, whether it be, I, I, I picked up boxing, you know, uh, when I was in a, a play playing Joe Lewis and, and just these things that you oh, just kind nice. of grab and yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I haven't used it yet, but I remember when I was in college, we were about to do a production of Three Musketeers. And so I took fencing and picked up fencing and, uh, Fencing's we were, fun. we were a bunch of theater nerds. So that would, you would catch us at our parties, uh, dueling each other. Um, <laughs> for fun. That does um, sound fun, though. It was a oh my god! It was tons of fun. It was better than like improv games. I mean, which I got tired of those. So, just being able to nerd and geek out like that with friends after school and stuff oh, like that. God. So I can I can definitely tell that you had a lot of friend or a lot of fun um, fencing and stuff like that because 
Oh, I yeah. had the same experience with my friends. Just we had foam swords instead. <laughs> well, it was, it was only me and me, and I still have my foil. Uh, only me and a, and a buddy of mine. We each had a foil. I think then people started buying foils, but we only had two masks, so it was just kind of a round robin, like of like you know, loser sits down, uh, you know, next challenger up. And uh, I gotta admit, I did pretty well. I have I'm so tall, and I, I so I used my my reach in my favor. Um, when it came to, to fencing, but um, yeah, it's the internet is a is a crazy thing nowadays. Like it's the, like everything, nothing goes away. Back in um, I was probably seventh and eighth grade. Um, a friend of mine, um, uh, he he his father had 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 it built a radio tower in uh, on his roof, and so he was an engineer. And my friend, he had um, all this radio equipment in his in his bedroom, um, and so and he would just buy albums after albums. After. He had like a huge album collection, and so he had a, a tiny radio show um, that I guess if you were we never att attempted it, but the, I think the idea was that if we were if you were really really close and you uh, to his house and you could maybe play with the dial and maybe find it, and so. It, I mean, it was his baby, but I came on and we used to call it KQRM, the Kings of Quality Rock Music. Um, nice. And nice. he was like, you know, the DJ and I was kind of his uh, his, his sidekick um, known as Dr. Gorilla. And I'd be like, Dr. Gorilla. <laughs> and nice. we would literally that, play albums that. and like seriously play like a real radio station, we'd play albums like we, you know, you'd, you'd, you know, and you, we made sure we didn't step on the lyrics. So you kind of intro a song and in, in musical intro and get out before the lyrics start. And like, it was serious. He, he, I'm sure he has them uh, recorded on cassettes somewhere, uh, but I don't know where they are, but um, yeah, those wonderful things. You're doing. If you ever find them though, I, oh, let yeah. me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just be curious. Because at the time, you know, we, we we felt like we were doing some really cool stuff, and we were really professional. Um, but I don't know. Uh, it's like we those old home videos like I find. You like yeah. the home videos. My brother and I used to make movies all the time when I was in high yeah. school. Like anytime I had a report, I taught my teacher to let me do it as a video report. My brother and I would go make a movie. I did a, I did a Star Wars book report. So basically, part of it was me and my brother just light lightsaber battling on camera. And of you know, course. That's, <laughs> So that's what I got away with. It was awesome. This um, is high school I took, era. <laughs> in in high school, I took video production um, in class, and I still have all the v DVDs that they're burned onto, and thankfully they are only in DVD form because yes. I <laughs> I don't think I ever want those seeing the light of day ever. No. Uh, we thought that we were doing great. Like we got an A plus on the projects and stuff like that. But looking back on it now, I'm like, that is not my calling. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, I know as an actor, like and and discovering, I think over the holidays, you know, we had a lot of people coming through for dinners and, and we have friends over for dinner pretty frequently and conversations that get tossed around. Um and a lot of my friends are actors in some regard, you know, doing commercials or whatever. And A, I remember one Thursday night, somehow we got talking about like, because um, I don't I haven't, I haven't really had a, a prominent commercial career. I tried it for a little while and it, it, it just didn't work out for me. Um, but I did do a couple of commercials early on in my career. And so I was like, yeah, I did these things. I did a, I did a Taco Bell commercial. And I'm kind of describing the commercial. And I'm like, yeah, I did this weird, you know, Miller Lite commercial. And I described the commercial. And I just, again, sometimes I, 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 I maybe old or seem older than I am. And I just didn't even think about it. And I said, next thing you know, a buddy of mine is on, the, on his phone. And he's like, I found them. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And so he finds these old commercials. And they're then, never going away. They're never going away. And then literally, like, right before christmas we were talking again another conversation about old stuff and i was talking about this pilot i think it was probably the first pilot i ever did um that uh, didn't get picked up and it was this pilot called rolling thunder and I, i'm i like again you gotta you gotta have a tough skin so i'm like i'm fine people watch it that's fine but it was this weird um 
I, I it was like it, it felt like it was going to be a Saturday afternoon show as opposed to a, like an actual prime time show. It they were really trying to turn it into a, a a real show. It was called Rolling Thunder, and it was all it was a group like this weird A team like group of people. Nice. You know, we had our we had the computer genius and the sexy girl and you know the ex military and and we all had different vehicles that shot non-lethal weapons so all i remember is i think i was ex-military and i remember i had a humvee like the old school humvees uh somebody had a big dually truck and somebody else, and they shot things like you know like oil slicks and glue that would stick bad guys up against the wall and um it was pretty bad but i we- would have loved it honestly um- and it does like we said the john ritter foundation now chris do you have any uh, were you ever blessed to meet John before? Did you ever have any past Man, history? I wish I had. No, I, 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 I grew up with John like so many people. I mean, um, you know, I, I think I've, I have seen every every episode first and foremost because I am that old of Three's Company, like as it was airing. Um, but uh, um, and I think he was. I, I just, you know, he was such a like physical comical genius you know mm. uh it's almost like especially for our time like it's like you know like a, a kind of a version of a of a, a buster keaton i would put him alongside of like maybe even like a lucille ball and, and like his just his his physical comedy was was um impeccable it was. But i wish i had yeah so we, we thank you for you know just being here to help us with that and you've been talking about commercials and theaters and things but something else that I, you were part of that was awesome was you voiced John Henry Irons yes. in the Superman, Death of Superman, Reign of Superman films. What was it like to kind of do voiceover? Because I didn't see a lot of voiceover type stuff on your IMDb. How was that yeah. different for you and bringing that character to life? Um, it was really, I mean, it was, A, it was just so cool because, you know, like I said, I didn't read a lot of comics, but I did watch a lot of cartoons. And so it was kind of getting a chance to really like scratch that itch for the younger me um and you know uh and the journey was funny because like i i think you know it was a two-part movie so i came in the first time and did uh in the first movie i had very little and then i had more to do in the second and it was in between uh recording those that black lightning happened like i was mm. I, and then I, and then when i came back to do the second one i was like cast as black lightning and i was doing and doing that and then i remember when we did the we did a premiere in new york and at that point i was black lightning so it was like i was like man i'm like firmly in the dc family it was really really kind of cool um but like you know doing voiceover i've i've been uh i've kind of come to voiceover late so that's why it's, there's not a lot of my imdb i'm starting to do uh, more of it now um it's a lot of fun um you know to just kind of roll out of bed and get ready to do something um i uh i got a chance it's not i'm not sure when or where or when it's coming out but there's like a marvel kind of anthology um animated series that's that's coming out and uh i did a voice in a kind of wakanda uh episode um which was a lot of fun because it was also very technical like we we spent a, a couple of weeks uh with a, a dialect coach to get the, the the precise kind of uh, African accent, they're really distinct about what what region and what they want the accent to sound like. So that was kind of taking me back to, to college days um, to uh, pick that up and then and then to kind of put it in. But like voiceover is just uh, it, it's it's a version of acting. It's it's interesting. Um, but like because all the in between, it's all about you know like bringing these things to life. But all the in between you kind of toss away the listening and the uh, the kind of silence because that doesn't play an animation. It's really all about on the word. So it's, it's a little different muscle, but it was it was a lot of fun. That sounds awesome. I uh, yeah, that was one of the questions that we had was, will we see Black Lightning one more time in Flash's final season? I've actually had a couple of friends actually ask me to ask you that. So no, of course. I, that I, up. Yeah, no, I imagine uh, I, I at this point, I would say because I haven't They're They're usually really good about uh, reaching out like way, way ahead of time. And so um, 
Uh, I would probably say not. I mean, um, I haven't had anybody like reach out to me. Like it, it was interesting because the last time I was on, I was literally still in the midst of finishing the final season of, of Black Lightning, and almost a year before we even I even went and filmed it, they reached out and said, "Hey, can you? Will you like to come back and do this?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I mean, that's like almost like six nine months away, but at this point, yeah. And so we made it work. Um, but I kind of felt like, oh, it probably was the last time, um, on a technical note, like my suit was falling apart for some reason. Like the, I mean, we were, it was a fight to keep the, there's, so the lightning bolts, they're practically lit, um, with mm -hmm. battery on my, on my suit. And for some reason, like, it was almost like my suit was going, this is my last go around. Cause it was like take after take, they would go out and then we'd have to like, you know, scramble to try to get them back on again. And it was just. It was it was um, really bizarre, but um, nobody's okay, but reached out. So. I do need to put this out there in the universe because I think it really needs to happen. Yeah. But can we please bring Black Lightning back? Um, I feel like uh, so I feel like it didn't get the justice that it deserved. Um, so I am a huge like superhero in general fan. So. Okay. I binge watch all of the superhero seasons that I can get my hands on. Um, mm -hmm. It's a problem. <laughs> and I feel like there was so much more that could have happened with the show. Yeah. And uh, just ending it, I feel like we didn't get like as much closer closure as I wanted personally. Right, right. right. Um, like I don't know maybe I'm just being stubborn and no, 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 I don't but so. I'm like I just I would like some more please thank you <laughs> yeah I, I mean I, I I agree you know I mean uh I I I think I envisioned uh, uh I think we all really envisioned a longer storyline like a longer run um and there were definitely things that uh you know uh avenues and, and directions that uh i thought we could have gone that we didn't uh, you know at one point i kind of thought it'd be really cool if we if we had transitioned into um you know jefferson leading the outsiders um and and i and you could have really... like they talked about a couple yeah. like spin-off series yeah yeah well that really i i, I felt like it really lent lent itself to that and then you start to branch off um, and uh, in a sense, create another, uh, um, you know, arrow, not Arrowverse. We were like, you know, I think we would always talk about, oh, this, this could almost become the next lightning verse. If you start to branch off, mm -hmm. you start bringing in static shock and all these different characters. Um, it really, I'm could. okay with that though. Like literally put it in all the different directions. I will, I will watch it. I, I, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You I'm know, the binge. thing was. We got what was it like talent. working with Bill Duke? Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for those who don't know, and I mean, hey, if you've watched anything, you will realize you've seen Bill Duke everywhere. And he is just, especially his most, most of his persona in life, uh, I mean, on film, has been this, like, ominous, he plays a bad guy so well. Um, and what's funny is that in life, he's so not like that. He is, like, the sweetest man he has he he's got great corny jokes and stories and but i found and so he was just so much fun uh uh to work with and he kind of it it you know he he he's uh part of what i found is 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 a consistent trend is that a lot of the actors out there that you see who are really good at playing bad guys and who play like bad guys all the time when you meet them in real life they're actually the sweetest they're so the opposite. And I'm like, maybe the reason they can play bad guys so well is just because they they are so sweet and they can just they get to just explore another side. But like I, I worked with um uh Donald Sutherland so so many years ago and he's played tons of bad guys and he was like the funnest, warmest, great guy. Bill Duke was the same way. They just a great a great time to be around. Now I do want to say one thing about Black Lightning as a show is um, your portrayal of Jefferson Pierce actually changed my life. Straight wow. up. 
Wow. Um, you are like I, the, the amazing the first father season. That ever well, yeah. it, you know, I watched, you know, Black Lightning, and I started because I I love the idea. I have two small children, you know, okay, I have two kids, and I love the idea of this superhero who's, you know, he's retired, he's done all this, but then he, you know, he picks it back up and he's dealing with the father aspect. I thought that was a great fresh take. But what yes. I love was Jefferson Pierce as the high school principal, and it actually made me change my career to go back into something I had thought about years ago was teaching. And I actually decided, I, you know, with, when COVID hit, I started putting all my effort into getting my teaching license and shifting into that. And it just, the you know, what you did as Jefferson, not just Black yeah. Lightning, but within the school, impacted yeah. me to like, that's the kind of person that I want to be more like as a character, yeah. you know, yeah. like, so... Yeah. Your portrayal of just Jefferson, you know, is effective, and I just wanted to let you know that. Thank you so much. Not I mean, so only good. were you a, a fantastic father figure throughout that movie, like even at the beginning, where you and oh my gosh, I can't remember your wife's name in the series. Um, uh, Lynn. Even though you and Lynn um, weren't together, you guys no. still had that full family. Like you supported each other and you still kind of leaned on each other and stuff like that, which was fabulous because a lot of the times that's not how it works in a home that's split up. Right. And then, like he was saying, me and my husband were discussing this um, a while back. You as a a principal and even when you were just a teacher at the school you made such an impact i know it was just television but you made such an impact on children's lives like when they took you out from being principal like all the students were like basically you know you be, go out and be a good person and your whole staged when you were up on stage saying hey guys i'm not gonna be principal anymore and they all stood up in support of you like I think honestly, all kids need that kind of role model to look up yeah, to. Yeah, that role yeah. model. Yeah, and yeah, well, even. That... No, go ahead. I'll say even rolling into like one of my favorite things is like I was so happy when you were brought into the crisis event because I loved your interaction with Grant. Yeah, you two yeah. had that scene together. Like I was like, that's the show that I want. You know, <laughs> like like that because you know you had this similar with the lightning powers and like. I was just like that. Listen to you two talk. Like I was like, that's yeah. the show. Like I love the way these characters. And I even have my right here, my little pop nice. black lightning right here. Awesome. I got here as part of. Them. But that's what awesome. was it? I mean, you know, not being the comic book person, um, yeah. and you know, auditioning for Black Lightning. What was it that made you want to do it? Was because I know originally the project was set up at Fox and it was going to be like a little bit more of a darker drama and you know, of course there's always the behind the scenes changes what brought you to the character because there's a lot of social justice that was brought out in the yeah. series um yeah. what drew basically what drew you to want to be black lightning well the thing is is like i honestly you know because i am a huge superhero fan so i've been wanting to play a superhero for a very 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 long time um and, you know, like, as soon as it started to be a thing where it was like, oh, there are movies and, and uh, even before TV shows really started to happen, uh, I think, well, some of the early Arrowverse shows started happening. It was something I wanted to do. And I remember um, I was going to actually went to church with a guy who he ended up writing. He's a writer. And so he ended up writing. Um, I think he did Jessica Jones and then mm. some some also some Luke Cage. Um and but he was the first person who came up to me. I remember at one point in, in years and years and years before, I think it's probably even before Black Panther, he was like, Oh my god, dude, you should play Luke Cage. And I'm like, I don't and I didn't know. I'm like, who's Luke Cage? And he's like, Oh, it's a superhero, and da da da. Um, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then I actually got I wound up getting the 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 like the actual graphic novel uh of of Jessica Jones and and reading that. And um and then later on that started happening and uh, I went and auditioned for Luke Cage and I honestly really just things that were going on in my life. I thought I was going to get that job and everybody or all my friends, I usually keep my, my business kind of private, but everybody knew that I wanted to play a superhero. Everybody knew that I wanted the job and I didn't get the job uh, as we all know. <laughs> and, and I was like, just 
heartbroken and I was rocked. And I reached a point where I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm on the other side of 40. Maybe this dream of playing a superhero as a bucket list thing is like just not going to happen. Maybe that's maybe it's just passed me by. And and then like everybody else, I saw in, you know, in um, the, the trades, as they say, about um, Black Lightning being done at Fox. And I didn't know of, of the character of Black Lightning. Uh, like I, I just was, I, and I guess I had been so burned from really, really wanting the Luke Cage thing that I was just like, oh, that's interesting. And I was kind of like, if that, if that comes my way, you know, I'll, we'll see what happens. And then, um, and then I, then I saw that it had moved to CW and um, my agent, like I reached out to my agent. I think I reached out to when, it, when they were at Fox and he said, um, no, no, you're on a, you're on a, like, you're on the, basically you're on the list to be considered. So when, when it's time for them to audition, like, trust me, you're, you're on their list. I'm like, okay, cool. So then I, then it got moved to CW and, and then all of a sudden I got a script and it's like, you know, here's, here's your, here's the audition. And I read, I read that first episode and I like the hair in the back of my neck was standing up. I was just like, I told my wife, I'm like, oh my God, you got to read this. Like, and, and I don't always tell her to read something I'm like you got to read this. Um, because I wanted to play a superhero for the, the sake of a superhero. I didn't know a lot about Jefferson Pierce or Black Lightning. I just wanted to play a superhero. But then when I started reading it, I was like struck by how much I was drawn to Jefferson Pierce, like Black Lightning, of course, but like Jefferson Pierce, it was like something in me where I was like, I know this guy. And, and it was like, I didn't want to say it because I didn't want it to not be true, but I was like, I think I am this guy. And, and I was kind of like, I don't think anybody else can do this. Um, and, you know, I'm a, I have three kids at the time I had two. Uh, family is very, very important to me. I education is very important to me. I decided to, as an actor, to, to go to college, and and even at the time, I taught uh, on the side. I taught acting for like eight years. So that teacher's mentality, all these things mm -hmm. were kind of already inherently in me. And even down to the day that I went to audition, um, I my daughter, my oldest, was in a choir concert that night, and. Uh, and I had two auditions that day. I had one at Warner Brothers, and then I had to go all the way to the other side of town to audition for Black Lightning. And I remember uh, I got there, and um, you're supposed to sign in on a little sign-in sheet, and that's what they usually go by. I got there, and I was so caught up in like just practicing my practicing and getting ready before going, I forgot to sign in. So suddenly I'm like, oh crap! I forgot to sign in, and I and since at that point, like multiple actors had signed in before me, so I I put my name down, and all I could think about was like, I'm not gonna make that concert. Like, I'm not gonna make my daughter's choir concert now. So I I remember going to the waiting room. I'm like, hey guys, I really can I go? Cause I I gotta make this. I I got a choir choir concert. And again, actors are really cool, and they're like, yeah, no, go, no problem. And I remember the casting director is like, you know, we got to get you to that choir concert. I'm like, yeah. And so I did my audition and I felt like I did like a solid job, but it wasn't like fireworks and stars. It was just kind of like I just did what I knew I needed to do. I got on my motorcycle and I made it to this to the choir show in time. And like within a couple of days, they were like, oh, we they want to test you for this. I'm like, okay, okay. And I went in and, and tested and then like, and then they made me wait for, I think a good couple of weeks because they were like, here's the thing. And my, my daughter heard it and she doesn't really understand Hollywood. She's like, you're the guy. This is what they said. You're the guy. But when you test, like that's the last step. That's when they take everything for towards the network to say, here are our choices, you know, pick. They never want to take just one person to a test because the network needs to have choices. And if they, and they don't want the idea of like, they bring one person and network says, we don't like that person. What else do you got? Now we got nothing. Good. Start over. <laughs> so they never do that. So they're like, you're the guy, but we, but we don't have any other choices. So they're going to go out and audition some more people, um, which they could audition more people. I had to explain this to my daughter. She's like, you got the job, right? I'm like, no, 
And she said, but you're the guy. And I'm like, no, no, no. They're going to go off and audition more people. They could go find another guy. <laughs> like, well, I'm glad they didn't. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so it was like a week or so later that they finally called and said, job's yours. Um, and I just, you know, I, again, all the way through it, like, Jefferson, I wanted to play a superhero and I was really happy playing Black Lightning because there, when you're playing a superhero, it's like playing two different people. There's the alter ego and there's the superhero. And mm. but I fell in love with Jefferson Pierce um, and was so proud of that, of what he represents. I've seen kids out in the world, uh, grocery stores and stuff, and, and who recognized me. And I realized I was like, this is someone that they can be proud of, that I can be proud of representing. I mean, he represents family and education. And exactly. He's, really, he's probably one of the most noble alter egos of a superhero I can think of. Uh, yeah, actually. That's, that's I why, that. yeah. And yeah, you're pretty much, you're pretty much awesome. <laughs> is what that, I'm that's, basic. you know, that, um, that's why, like I said, it is the character impacted me as like a father and as just a, a person of what I want to mature and grow into more. Cause you know, I'm not old, but I'm older. Like I just wanted to change and, uh, the character, you know, was definitely like an inspiration for that. So we do yeah. appreciate that. You know, you did black lightning. It was a great show. And I was always championing for it. Cause it was always one of the things that kind of like show that kind of, I don't say people forgot, but it was just like, sometimes I felt like, you know, with my friends that all watched them, like that was one they did. And I was like, no, no, you have to watch this one. Like there's a different yeah. feel tone niche that it's touching that the other shows aren't hitting. Yeah. And that's what yeah. I loved about the show was more of the, the family, the father, the, the aspects yeah. that it, you, you took. Well, I think that we, I, I think, you know, uh, I mean, in hindsight, it's 2020 um, and people much up farther above the, the food chain than me, uh, I guess, made these, these decisions. But I think if we had um, joined, you know, because we were kind of late to the, the crossovers. And I feel like if maybe a, a season prior, if we had got into the crossover sooner, yeah, then maybe uh, it could have like opened people's eyes and said, oh, there's this other show. And I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. The I last thing we want to say real quick. I would love to uh, talk to you for like 10 more hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's so many things that like, Tyler and I have been talking for a month trying to like, what questions do we really want to ask and all this other stuff and trying to figure out like what the most important things are. And we wanted to talk about what remains and your new newest movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, man, there's other people waiting and we keep getting the curtain call and they're like, hey guys, it's, uh, it's getting close to the hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you guys want, do you want to, I can, if I, I, cause I don't want people to like not get their questions. If there's questions out there, it, uh, I'll, I'll try to be short. You want to rapid fire some questions? Yes. Let's rapid funny, fire funny, this. Funny stories from never been kissed. From the set funny never stories been never been kissed. Um, I mean, well, never been kissed was like, for me was, was, uh, primarily I did a lot of improv on the screen. Um, and in a lot of improv, like I remember Drew Barrymore coming in and she's like, you look so, what did she say? She said, you look so young. How is that possible? And I just kind of improv I'm like, fresh nuts and berries. Uh, <laughs> I, I care. But it was just, um, yeah, it was just a lot of fun from an improv standpoint because I just sat at a blank screen and made up most of that dialogue. What's your favorite movie and why? Oh my God, that's real. That's not possible. It's, a, I, it's the hardest too, question ever for anybody. That is for a, a, a person like me. It's like, no, there's just too many. Um, I mean, I love The Graduate. I love, uh, uh, I mean, obviously The Godfather. Um, Christmas time, I always have to watch The Bishop's Wife because I'm just a big, huge fan of Cary Grant. Um, uh, it's just too many. Well, on that note, we really do have to explain i i wish we had time to do all of the comments because we've gotten so many comments in the comment section but tyler would you like to remind people as to why we're here and also cress thank you <laughs> <laughs> for like literally everything so oh, thank you so much it's my pleasure we are here 
for the Ritter Rally, raising money for aortic heart health, for heart health. I'm tongue-tied. But, yes, yeah, Mr. Williams, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. We want to talk about What Remains because it seemed like a very uh, personal film for you. I heard you talk mm-hmm. about it a little bit online. And we just were running out of time. Like, it's just you have great conversation with great people. Time goes by, and it feels like you never have enough time for anything. Just if true. you ever want to talk to us, uh, you know, we've got our own shows that we could spin off on. No, I'm kidding. Um, but really. Well, I mean, yeah, reach out reach out to uh, <laughs> my people and, and uh, uh, as, as they have, and, you know, we'll try to make something work. Yes. And Perfect. I'm going to ask that George, because we don't have – the technology on our side to play the video but um we do have a video explaining why we're here and yeah tyler Arch- thank you guys for being awesome no, thank, thank you, you for are. joining us thank you for right. being here chris thank you it was nice meeting you chris nice meeting you. hope i'll see you guys again soon bye yes bye look up in the sky We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. You find all of our information. One dollar a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.